it appears as though the only certainty in the housing market right now is the uncertainty of it. It's been a crazy month. When you look at what the data was telling us just a month ago, it is now appearing as though the housing market, despite all the reports of doom and gloom, may in fact be in for a soft landing. What exactly does that mean? And how does it impact you if planning on buying or selling a home in the near future? I explain it all in today's video. Hi, this is Andrew with the S2 real estate team of EXP Realty coming to you from Frisco, Texas. And man, I tell you, if you've seen any of the videos I've done recently, I've been watching the news, watching the data pretty closely. And, you know, real estate and housing is one of those things that everybody has an opinion about, right or wrong, good or bad, everyone has an opinion. So in today's video, I just want to take a few minutes and kind of go back over the last couple of years and take a look at how we got to where we are and what the latest data is showing us with regards to where we might be heading. Is that a prediction? Not necessarily. Um, but again, it is going to be driven by data as that is what I prefer to do. But let's take a quick look for a minute and say, how did we get here? Okay, so, you know, obviously the housing market was a very strong, healthy market all the way through 2017, 18, 19, and into the beginning of 2020. And then the pandemic hit. Unemployment skyrocketed. Everything ground to a halt. And doom and gloom was everywhere. In fact, you may recall there was report after report after report and video after video after video saying housing is doomed. This is going to be catastrophic. We are going to have a crash bigger than we had in 2008, the Great Recession. That didn't turn out to be too true, did it? Um, in fact, the exact opposite happened, which virtually, to my knowledge, nobody predicted. Housing absolutely took off and it went on a two year unprecedented run. And, you know, we didn't get hit with a wave of foreclosures. The housing market didn't collapse. As a result, we were underbuilt for 14 straight years. So we had a supply issue. And then the Fed, and I'm not going to get into all the details on that, basically artificially drove mortgage rates down. The interest rates went really low, so a, all kinds of demand was created. So you had incredibly high demand against very low supply. And as a result, what happened? Home prices soared. Simple supply and demand equation at in, in play right there, which caused what we had. Well, we all knew it was unsustainable. It couldn't continue. That wasn't a question in anybody's mind. That was not a sustainable model. It was not a sustainable market. Prices were getting out of control. And then what happened? Mortgage rates happened, right? So now all of a sudden you had mortgage rates starting at the beginning of this year took off. And so what did that do? Well, that kind of changed everything from the perspective of demand. It really hit the demand side of the equation. Let me share my screen quickly with you here and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so as you can see here, this is mortgage rates. This is the first week of January this year. Rates were just under three and a quarter. We kind of tread, we, we jumped up and then kind of treaded water all the way until the beginning of March. So we're still nicely in the threes. Then right here, wham, we went on a crazy run that then flattened out the beginning of June, jumped up again, and has now settled back down a bit. But over this two month period right here, March through the end of May, actually into June, right here, when mortgage rates jumped substantially, what did that do to people that were planning on buying a home? Time out, uh, this, is, this is crazy. What someone could afford in January, they now couldn't afford in May. They couldn't afford in June but prices weren't doing anything. Prices were still staying elevated. So the buyers kind of took a pause. They, they, they stepped back and demand started to plummet. Well, what happened as a result of demand plummeting? Well, sellers started to get a little bit nervous. Not only sellers, but we're talking new home builders as well. 
little bit nervous, right? What's going to happen? There's there's a lot of talk. Are we in a bubble? Are we not in a bubble? Is the market going to crash? What's actually going to happen? And people got nervous, understandably. So you have sellers that not quite realizing the frenzy was over, um, rushed to put homes on the market. Right. And then you also had the new builders starting to offer incentives to try and clear the inventory that we had. As a result, you had a period of time where demand fell and you had inventory really start to increase. Hence, all of the predictions that came out with regards to, oh, my gosh, the market is setting itself up for a crash. But funny enough, in the last month, something unexpected happened. Um, the demand side has actually stabilized. In fact, this past weekend, I was out at new construction communities with clients and you could hardly get around the sales offices for all the people. It was absolutely packed, jam packed in the sales offices with how many people. Now, again, this is in North Texas, maybe different when you're li where, where you live, but that's how it was here in North Texas. The builders are offering some good incentives. People were out there and they had all kinds of wait lists, all kinds of things. And the builders were selling a lot of homes, new communities that have only been open two and a half weeks. They've already sold half of all of the allotment. You know, the first 43 homes, 21 of them have already sold. Right. So the pace of sales was extremely quick. Now on the supply side, one thing that wasn't expected was that the number of new homes coming to market started to flatten. It was expected that supply was going to keep increasing and it hasn't. So if you take a look right here, this is where it's talking about not enough homes for sale in the United States, right? So right here, as of now, we're running at about a three month supply. Okay, so three months is not a lot of homes for sale. When you look back historically, you go back all the way to 99, all the way through 2006, we were close to five months, mid fours, right? Then obviously you had the period where we did crash. Look at how much inventory was available. And then since then, it's dropped all the way back off. And even right here, we're talking about only a three month supply of homes. Okay, now again, as I mentioned, that's gonna be different everywhere. So let's take a look at this for just a second. Now here, again, I'm showing you specifically Frisper, Frisco and Prosper, Texas, combined in the cities there. But here's the point I was trying to make. You know, we're running at about two and a half months supply in Frisco, just under four months supply in Prosper. But take a look here. See what I'm saying? See, we had a sharp run up in inventory and then the line is starting to go flat. Well, I don't have that chart in front of me for the national level that shows the exact same thing. But I can tell you that nationally, we're experiencing the same thing. The supply line is starting to flatten. And that was not expected. Hence, why I was saying that the housing market may, in fact, be in for a bit of a soft landing right now. So the number of homes that are coming onto the market is dropping substantially. It's leveling off, whereas demand is stabilizing as mortgage rates have stabilized. So we're going to have to wait and see where this goes going forward. And I don't know if you happen to see it, but in the description below, I put a link to the video I did last week where I talked all about the latest predictions that have come out from the experts with regards to mortgage rates and home prices and where they think they're heading within the next year. Just as a side note, you might be surprised. Um, and for those of you, you know, sitting out there right now, hoping that the bottom falls out of the market and prices drop substantially, that's not what the data is telling us right now. So I'm not saying that the market doesn't have a change coming. I'm just telling you what the data is sharing or what the data is telling us right now. So it's very, very interesting and it's going to keep changing, I am sure. If you don't subscribe to this channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell notification to be notified when I put out a new video. Again, as I said at the beginning, I don't like to make predictions, but next week I'm going to talk all about a housing market crash. We're going to dig into what the latest data is showing us and whether or not I think the market is going to crash 
within the next 12 months. And I'll bring, I'll bring all the numbers, I'll bring the facts and figures that I have in order for not to convince you one way or the other, but in order to provide the data so that you can make the best decision for you. And that best decision is going to be different for everyone. My goal is simply to make sure that you're basing the decision for you based upon the fact, not based upon fear, not based upon fiction, not based upon a headline. So again, hopefully this information helps. As always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can give Troy or I a call at 469-296-5230 or feel free to send an email to contact at s2realestateteam.com.